Hello everyone, it is the Canadian Futures Trader here. Welcome to the channel and welcome to the video. Gotta get more followers. If you have not already, I encourage you to hit subscribe and turn on the alerts. Be notified anytime I put out a new video. In today's video, I'm going to be going over how to set up a workspace in Jigsaw Day Trader. So this video won't necessarily be very long or very in-depth. If you have other Jigsaw tasks that you're interested in, I'm going to be putting together more videos. Or always feel free to reach out and contact me. And if it's something I can help out with, I am more than happy to answer your question or try to put together a tutorial. So let's get to it. When you first open Jigsaw, this is all you will see is essentially this toolbar. So the way to think of a workspace is essentially it is a collection of whatever it is you're going to be putting on your screen, whether that's depths of the market, some gauges, maybe some uh, reconstructed tapes, a chart, whatever it might be. And then we're going to save that collection. Since there are so many moving pieces in Jigsaw and you can really customize it pretty heavily, uh, the workspaces are important because it allows you to save all that customization. You certainly want, wouldn't want to have to set all this up each and every time you logged in. As well, you probably would want different workspaces for different products, or maybe you just have two different workspaces set up completely different for the same product. I know I speak for myself. I have a one setup for trading the treasuries. I have a different setup for trading something like an NQ. And then I have a third setup for when I'm doing spreads. So let's get to setting up this workspace. You can go about it two ways. You can essentially add some pieces first and then save it, or you can give it a name first and then add to it. I usually like to give it a name first just so we have it locked in that we're saving uh, what we're doing. So if you go to file here on the toolbar, there's a few options here. One thing I want to mention is that probably not as traditional as most programs usually in most programs you when you have shortcut icons like you do here in the toolbar you also have access to these things through a menu not so much with jigsaw a lot of the things on here you can only access through here but to create a workspace you do do it through the file uh, menu and we're going to go to new here is where you would give your workspace a name it defaults to the jigsaw trading workspaces folder you see i have a bunch set up here from the past and some of these i still actively use uh, and you'll see right here it will be labeled as a workspace file so let's give it a name uh, let's just call this uh, test workspace hit save and it's as simple as that so a few things now you will see it here on top jigsaw day trader workspace test workspace so you can always see which workspace you're working in as well here you will see a list of open workspaces so a couple things about this if they're checked that means they're active now both of these i don't have anything added to the workspace so that's why my screen is essentially blank uh, but if i had a bunch of depth of markets on both of these they would both be kind of up on the screen you can also close any of these so i usually only keep open what i'm actively using so i'm going to close this this test one that i was building before and if you go now you see there's just this one I'll mention two and then i'll show you how to add to the workspace if you did have a few workspaces open uh so let's just open up that test one again whichever one is in bold is the active workspace so say i did actually have a bunch of depth of markets and charts and indicators and whatever um, set up for each of these workspaces and you didn't know what you were looking at on the screen well whichever one is in bold is the one that's active as well the check mark if you uncheck something you can have a workspace technically open i guess you would say uh, so it's easily accessible but it's not going to be on your screen whatsoever and I think this will make more space if we add a few things to these. So let's go ahead and add some stuff. Uh, actually, I'm going to uncheck this one and check this one. Now, the other thing I should mention here is whatever is bold, like I said, it's going to be the active workspace. So even though I have test workspace checked, so it's kind of the one that's on the forefront if we had elements added to it, the May 31st one is active. So what you want to do is hit this as set as active workspace. Or another way, if you don't want to deal with that type of stuff, I'd encourage you just leave open only the workspace that you're actively doing things in. So right now, this is the one that's active. That's the one that will be on the forefront. Uh, so we're good. So let's just add a few things here. Uh, so this uh, kind of uh, hammer is the depth of sales. So let's add a depth of sales. So when you click the button to bring up a depth of market, you have to tell it, okay, which product is this going to be for? 
uh, you're gonna have to choose your connection so I'm currently connected to a uProfit Trader Rhythmic connection again if you need information about that I can certainly give you that that would be a separate video about connecting uh, you would choose your account here I have mine blanked out and then we would choose our symbol so I'm gonna choose uh, let's choose NQM1 actually I think it's M21 in here and hit OK when you do that, it will bring up the standard depth of market, which from here you can obviously customize. If you've seen my other videos, I have mine uh, laid out a little bit differently. I have the color scheme completely different, but this is where you would get started. So let's just add one more thing here just to show you, or maybe a few things here. Uh, we won't spend as much time on it. Let's say I wanted to bring up a reconstructed tape. I would click here. Again, I'm going to have to tell it uh, what product, so I'm going to choose MQ. And now we have our reconstructed tape over here. I should mention I'm recording this on an evening, so there's not a lot of activity. You're not seeing a lot of contracts traded. That's why you're not seeing the price fly around. You're not seeing uh, things hit the tape. There we go, future contracts traded. Uh, just in case you're wondering why things are moving so slowly. And then lastly, let's bring up one more thing. How about we bring up a, uh, how about we bring up a gauge? Same thing, click on the gauge, I'm going NQ. And here is my gauge. So now, of course, each of these elements is customizable. You probably haven't seen the gauges in my normal trading videos. I, I don't use them myself. Um, as well, I usually keep the reconstructed tape uh, with a bit bigger font than this, and I also get rid of the time. I don't really care about the time on here. Uh, but nonetheless, that gives you an idea of how you would add a few things from here. Maybe you, you know, you move this down here. Maybe you add a few more gauges up here. Uh, maybe you move this over here, whatever the case might be. Of course, you can maximize it. You just saw me do that. Nonetheless, so once you have your, your desktop set up how you like it, you've already given your workspace a name. I would go ahead and just hit save. Um, another thing you can do is just hit save all. So if you don't want that extra kind of click in there, just go save all. It'll save all of your open workspaces, whether they made changes or not, obviously. And that's basically it. So at this point here, I'll show you. So if I was to close this workspace, and you see now this is the only one that's open. Let's go ahead and open that one we just closed. And there you go. It opens up exactly how we left it. So that's how you go about creating a workspace, saving it, rearranging a few of the elements there. Of course, at this point, you could add more things, customize it, save it, and it will come up the same the next time. Since we're here, I am just going to show you what it would look like if I did have uh, kind of a second workspace active. So let's actually uncheck this. Let's check this one. Uh, let's set this at the active one. So we don't have any elements added to this May 31st test one. So let's do this one a little bit differently, uh, just so you can like easily tell that it's different um, we'll add this but we'll put it over here for example and maybe we want to we want a second one let's do uh, yes maybe you, I mean I've done this in the past too where I'll have a workspace where I'm monitoring multiple products and then say I see one that I want to trade in I will switch my workspace to a workspace that's dedicated exactly to this so say you had an NQ an ES a YM a ZB, a CL, and you start seeing activity in the ES that you really like. I could have a dedicated workspace that's just ES, so from here I would get out of this workspace essentially and go to my ES one, just another use case. Uh, nonetheless, let's throw a few more things up here just for fun. There's a gauge, and I mean, depth of mark is pretty standard, but uh, Actually, let's do exactly that, and this could almost, you might, uh, so let's do YM. So maybe this is our workspace where we monitor things. Uh, let's bring up a YM gauge. I think you guys get the idea. I'm not going to do all of them here. Uh, so this is your desktop where you just monitor the market and then you start seeing activity in the ES Whether it's on the tape or on the gauge you go, you know what? I really want to trade ES So here what you would do is if you had a workspace that was dedicated to ES Maybe you uncheck this you see all the elements disappeared Check this one now. You still need to make this the active one You notice it's on the screen, but it's not active That means if I was to attempt to trade in this right now, it would tell me this is not active You're just kind of viewing it. So set as active simple 
Again, quick way to check is always by whatever is old is what is active, and I believe there's only you can only have one active workspace at a time. So you can have multiple open, you can view several workspaces, but only one of them will be active. And let me just show you here. So if I click on this, you see that populated. So, so you see here now I have both my workspaces active. Again, you can tell that by the checks as well. We know we just built these. These are two separate workspaces, but they're on the screen at the same time. The one that will be active, if I was to try and trade, will be the one that is bold. Again, if you want to get rid of one, maybe we want to get rid of those gauges, just click there, and now this is the only one that's up. So hopefully that helps you guys uh, with your workspaces a little bit. I would encourage you to, just out of best practice, not leave. Like, you could have 10 of these open if you want. I don't know what the maximum is, honestly. Um, I'd encourage you to close the ones you're not actively using. I mean, it's fine to have a few, uh, but it is eating up system resources because they're technically still there in the background waiting to be, you know, brought up on screen. So they are pulling data, loading. So they are taxing your system a little bit. So just a, just a word of caution to uh, close the ones you're not actively using. And again, guys, at any point, you can go save all. So if I made changes to these and say I had a third and a fourth and a fifth one open, just hit save all, they're all going to be saved. And that's basically it, guys. So hopefully that helps you with setting up a workspace, how to save it, kind of how to manage them a little bit. I'll see you in the next video.